All the devices in Reason 13 are nearly as new to me as they are to you. And so far, I am definitely enamored with Polytone. I know I'll use it a lot of my music because it's already become a first reach instrument for me during the beta testing period. Ripley is one of those devices that I am super excited by because I know that I've only barely begun to explore what I can do with it. There is complexity and depth that will be challenging me to push further with that for a while. And the new workflow features in the browser in Reason 13, that's already become second nature to me. But all that said, I also know that in one year's time, the devices that will have ended up in my own Reason rack more than any of the other new stuff in Reason 13 are the three utility tools, sidechain tool, stereo tool, and gain tool. How do I know that? Because I'm constantly doing those three things in my production and my mixing. I'm constantly getting that pumping sidechain sound. I'm constantly widening my stereo field. And I am constantly boosting or attenuating the volume of my combinators on my mastering insert chain to help me control the game. So today, I want to get you as stoked as I am to have access to these devices by showing you what they do. And here's the good news. Unlike big, complex devices with immense depth and immense learning curves, these devices, well, they're easy to understand, easy to use, and hard to resist once you realize how useful they are for your own music. First, let's look at the tool that's got me super pumped. Like, like pumped. Like, like pumping. I'm, I'm talking about the sidechain tool. When most people refer to the sidechain effect, they're not actually referring to any sidechain routing or sidechain techniques to achieve the sound they're talking about. These days, what almost all people are referring to and wanting when they say sidechain is a volume ducking effect that's most commonly on a quarter note pulse that gives otherwise static synth pads some bounce like this, where they get out of the way of the kick drum. But sidechain pumping also makes a bass line feel extra groovy by way of some dynamic enhancement. And that's been with us on nearly everything ever since Benny Benassi released his Hypnotica album. And I get it. It makes riffs pump like this. And if those are the type of effects you're wanting to, either on pads or synth lines, then Sidechain Tool makes this process a plug and play one step process. The controls practically speak for themselves, so I'm not going to spend too much time dwelling on them. You see the volume ducking curve front and center, but usually the first decision you want to make is how much ducking is occurring. So I can dial in the amount here. We can select some preset volume curves, and they will have a musical impact on how the baseline feels when being ducked. But we can also grab the handles and start designing our own curve, including the attack, the hold, release, as well as the curve slope for the attack and the release. And those same controls can be accessed here in knob form. We can then take this whole curve and slide it forward or backward on the beat as well. The most common rate for this pulsing type of effect is every quarter note, which is why it's the default setting. But you could speed up or slow it down if you'd like as well. At one eighth note, the bass line gets a different feel. And automating between one quarter or one eighth and faster at different times in a song like this might be a cool variation. If I didn't want to duck my entire signal's frequency spectrum, I could enable band mode and choose a crossover frequency where, for example, the low frequencies below this point get ducked, but the mid and high frequencies pass through as normal. Or vice versa. And my best advice there is try it, you'll love it. But so that's all super straightforward, right? Well, yeah, I mean, it's supposed to be. That's what these tools are, super straightforward. But what if your kick drum pattern wasn't happening every quarter note, yet you still wanted a bass line to duck out of the way for it? Here's a pad sound with a down-tempo beat. If I wanted to give this kick drum its own sonic space, I can bring in a sidechain tool under my pad, I'll reset it, and I'll change it from auto pump to trigger. We'll flip to the back of the rack and tap off a parallel signal from our kick drum's mix channel. That incoming audio signal now crosses a threshold that we can set 
and triggers our volume ducking envelope each time it does. The rest of the controls remain the same for you to determine the rate, the attack, the curve. I'll set our trigger ducking envelope to 1 8th note and create a custom envelope curve for a nice, easy release. Now our pad interacts in a way that gives the kick its own space in the mix and sets us up nicely to layer more production on top without completely burying the kick drum. If, instead of an audio trigger, we wanted to trigger our ducking envelope via a MIDI signal, we could switch from audio to MIDI, create a track with our sidechain tool in the sequencer, and now any note I play on my keyboard will act as the trigger. In this mode, I usually slide the curve forward just a bit, increase the rate, and adjust the ducking curves to create a type of gating vibe, and even fluttering effects that I can play with. I have sidechain tools set up to trigger off of all incoming MIDI notes right now, but I could set it to respond to just one MIDI note trigger if I wanted to build this into a playable combinator, where any note I choose triggers the sidechain tool, and all the other notes play my instrument. The final mode sidechain tool operates in is the most traditional, in the sense that it works the way sidechain ducking used to work in hardware compressors in an analog studio workflow. So I'm not going to dwell on it too much and go into too much depth here because, well, for one thing, and I'm being honest, most of you probably won't use this mode. And those of you who are watching right now and going like, uh, huh, hang on a second, Ryan, uh, you are wrong. You bet we will. Well, you're the people who already know how to use this style of compressor-driven sidechain ducking. That said, if you are someone who might want to explore this, just know that it works via an external signal that gets fed into the sidechain inputs on the back, but instead of acting like a trigger and a predetermined envelope in the way that audio trigger mode does, the envelope shape and the ducking amount is happening in response to the live incoming audio signal. Louder signals will duck more based on the threshold amount. There is one thing though that I do want to specifically highlight here, and that is the input filters that you can dial in to focus what part of the incoming audio frequency spectrum is being listened to and responded to. For these drums, I'll filter to just the low end kick and have the ducker respond less to the snare and the percussive elements on the top end frequencies. When working with sidechain in this mode, I usually mute the channel that's feeding our sidechain so that I can hear the way the volume is ducking in response, and I can dial in the right attack, release, threshold, and ratio to suit my needs. There's one last thing we need to mention about sidechain tool before we jump over to gain tool and stereo tool, and that is send mode. Send mode is a special function of sidechain tool that exists when we set sidechain tool up as one of our aux sends in our mixer. Sometimes you want to have a sidechain ducking effect that is common across multiple instruments and sounds in your mix, like this trap beat that I've got going. I've got drums, a couple of 808s, and a couple layers of piano samples that give us a vibe. I'd like all of these elements to be sidechained off the kick drum, so I'll create a sidechain tool as one of my aux sends in the mixer, and I'll activate send mode. That is a very important step for this process, activating send mode. On the back of the rack, I'll send a parallel out from my kick drum's mix channel to the sidechain input of sidechain tool, and I'll set up sidechain tool in audio trigger mode. Now I can just dial in the amount of ducking I want on each channel by sending it out to sidechain tool more or less. For best results, I want to go up to but not over 0 dB on my send knob. But okay, that is sidechain tool. Let's talk about gain tool now. Gain tool is a Swiss army knife for several volume related tasks you might want to achieve. The first and foremost, it turns up or down the gain of your signal, helping you keep a handle on your volume levels in multi-device signal chains. Next up, it has a pan control, as well as a style of stereo enhancement that was a common technique on analog studio consoles. It's a different technique than the stereo tool uses, which we'll come to in a moment. On the right hand side, you've got buttons to do useful stuff like mute the signal, invert the phase of the left or right channel, swap the left and right channels, and sum them to mono. We can also switch from controlling the width and pan to instead using gain tool in dual pan mode. Or for my friends in the UK, dual pan mode? You guys say that weird. 
but dual pan mode gives you separate pan controls for your left and right channels, which means you can choose exactly how your stereo image is panned via discrete left-right channel positioning. We're gonna hold off on discussing the third position of this switch called router mode, and even skip over Game Tool's mix mode for right now to discuss crossfade mode. The big feature of crossfade mode is, well, just that, the crossfader. We could use that like a DJ mixer and run two different drum breaks through Game Tool on the backside, and then crossfade between them for a classic beat juggling type of effect. But we can also use it in musical phrases, like setting up two bass synth instruments, routing them into Game Tool, and creating a bass line that is the cross-faded combination of both. Here I've got a custom combinator set up with two synths. One polytone goes into the main input of Game Tool, and it has a bass line generator above it that sounds like this. While the other complex one synth goes into the aux input on Game Tool, and it has a different bass line that sounds like this. I've added a Pulsar dual LFO into my combinator, which is providing a CV signal, which I've fed into the crossfade control voltage input on the back side of my gain tool. And on the front side, we can see how that is wiggling our crossfader back and forth between our two polytones. Now that we understand how the crossfader works, let's go back over to the right side of Game Tool to discuss the router. The router looks a lot like our crossfader, and that's because it behaves in a similar way, but with a key distinction. Crossfade mode lets you choose between two different input signal paths. This output fader lets you choose between two different output signal paths, meaning we can send our audio different directions based on how this fader is set. For example, I've added a couple of effects to my baseline, a Ripley space delay and a phaser from Sweeper. I've also added another gain tool device that is set up in the middle position called mix mode, which gives me a basic two-channel mixer. The main output of my first gain tool carries my baseline audio to the main input of my two-channel mixer. The split output of my first gain tool passes the signal through my two effects. And that means I can move the output fader and send my baseline through the effect signal path or direct to my mixer for these experimental sonic accents like this. And actually, you're already hearing the third of Reason 13's new utility tools in this example. Stereo Tool is one of my favorites of the whole package of Reason 13 devices, and it's the most unassuming little simple device. It does one thing super well. It makes mono sounds into wide stereo. In this baseline combinator we've been working with, I've already got a stereo tool in the signal path. Listen to the widening impact it has when I turn it on and off, and our baseline jumps back and forth between mono and stereo. Let's look at a more simple signal path and a synth that benefits enormously from this, Subtractor. Because Subtractor is a monophonic synthesizer, so if we drag a stereo tool underneath of it, we can fabricate a whole stereo signal from its mono output. I just dial up how much width I want. Usually, I want a lot. What I love about Stereo Tool is that it's not creating this stereo signal using problematic techniques like the commonly taught Haas effect. <laughs> and that can introduce some phase problems in your signal very easily, and they show up when you listen to your mix on a mono speaker, like many phones or an Alexa speaker or other consumer Bluetooth listening devices. Stereo Tool's method is 100% mono compatible. In fact, you can check that yourself by clicking the mono button on its front panel. You'll hear that our chords just sound like we pressed bypass, but it's not bypassed. 
it's just summed back to mono in a way that shows no phase artifacts, which, which is exactly what you want, so kudos to Stereo Tool for that one. Taking mono signal synthesizers like Subtractor and making them wide is a great use for Stereo Tool, but I am also super excited by Stereo Tool's ability to take mono audio recordings and widen them out in my mix. One example I'll be using this for all the time is acoustic guitar. I record acoustic guitar a lot, but I seldom take the time and the hassle to set up stereo mic pairs, move my tube trap acoustic baffles into position, and all that stuff. Most times, I literally just take this microphone that I'm speaking to you right now through, and I just kind of like angle it down towards my guitar. That's exactly what I did here, in fact. And it sounds fine, but if I add stereo tool to this recording, suddenly my quick and dirty recording of convenience takes on the stereo width and, well, thus the polish, as if I spent a couple hours recording it in the proper stereo way. When I do this on acoustic guitar, I particularly like to dial up the low bypass control so that the lower frequencies don't get widened out to stereo and stay in the center channel. And this is actually the most realistic to stereo mic techniques, where the low frequencies tend to reach both mics in the stereo pair more evenly than the higher frequencies. Stereo Tools Wizardry is based on a series of comb filters behind the scenes, and because of that, we have the ability to adjust those comb filter bands. It's something to be aware of and, you know, adjust to taste. That's amazingly all there is to Stereo Tool. And yet, I love it so much. I mean, I love all these utility tools because they're all great at what they do. And listen, mark your calendar, folks. In 12 months, I want you to look back and open the reason songs that you were making yesterday versus the ones that you're making one year from now. The newer ones will be absolutely full of these devices doing their focused jobs in all your signal paths. I just know it. How do I know? Well, because I'm a month into having them myself during the beta testing period for Reason 13, and they're already in all my songs and all my Reason racks. Which, speaking of, I think I'm gonna go develop this guitar idea some more, and I suggest you go make a little music yourself too.